Hello and welcome to our first touring video of 2023. It's been three months since we were last away. The caravan's been serviced, I've sterilised the water system and I'm putting the part bottle of milk in the fridge because the fridge is full, ready to go and that fits in there. And we're off to Chatsworth Caravan and Motor Home Club site in Baslow in the Derbyshire Peak District. We're on the A619 going through Baslow Village and we're approaching the Cavendish Hotel. That's the hotel there on the left. We're gonna be turning left just here. This is the entrance down to the caravan side. Looking on Google, it's quite a long, narrow lane this, but it has got passing places. Cattle grid there. Passing place here. There's one or two caravans in front of us. One, two, three caravans and a motorhome. One, two, three, yeah. The warden has given us the site map, told us to go straight to our pitch, and once we've pitched up, come back to reception and let them know which pitch we're on and uh, pay the fee. It's uh, 0 0.7 of a mile from the main road to this point. Oh, there's reception here to the right. It's quarter past two, took us about an hour to unpack. We've even brought daffodils. They're still well in flower, so we're ashamed to throw them away. We're going to have this chocolate muffin and a cup of tea, and then we'll have a walk around site. Let's have a look at the site map. This is the entrance road into reception. There are a total of 120 pitchers. 26 of them are super pitchers, these red and black ones. Here's the facility block. Here's the entrance to the dog walk exercise area. And here is the gate onto the Chatsworth Estate. As part of the information they give you at reception is a list of eating places. Nearest shops and nearest fuel station. That's the entrance behind me, that's reception and there's lots of caravans coming in so it's going to be pretty full this site this week. That's the one way road in and that's the one way road out. We're on pitch eight behind me. Uh, you've got a block paved surface for the caravan and Chatsworth is on the other side of that wall. This is where we are, pitch eight, and this is a view from our caravan. That's the facility block. This is the front of the facility block. We're stood here looking down this road. We didn't go up and down each road because the site's nearly full and there's lots of people milling about so we didn't want to invade the privacy. 
I hope my clips gives you an overview of the site. It's a tightly packed site. We met Steve and Claire from Rotherham earlier on site. He come over and shook my hand. They've recently started caravanning. They both watch my channel and they say my videos have been a great help to them. So that's good to know. So nice to meet you, Steve and Claire. Chatsworth Ducks. <laughs> It's the usual setup, but come and have a look at this. Every super pitch at Chatsworth has got its own chemical toilet waste point. It's a 16 amp hookup. This is a TV hookup point, and my 10 metre hookup cable is a perfect length. The grey waste point is on the opposite side of the caravan to the outlets, so this is an opportunity to show you my grey waste pipe extension along the rear of the caravan with the collapsed pipe at the end. The collapsed pipe pushes into the push fit coupling 90 degree bend and then you've got a constant flow into the drainage point. Look how the tap's leaking. I've got a quick fix for that. Tap the tap connector off. I've got a spare connector here. I'm going to take out the rubber o-ring. So there's already one in there. What I'm going to do is double it up. Screw that back on. Turn the tap on, no more leaks, so there's no need for any PTFE tape. Chatsworth House is currently closed but it reopens mid-March. The house and stables are Grade 1 listed. There are 25 rooms to explore with historic works of art and there are 105 acres of stunning gardens where you'll find the uh, famous Cascade and Emperor Fountain. They're both gravity fed from the lakes and ponds via watercourses in the woods above the house, so we'll be looking for those. Uh, and I've been reading that the water then flows from the water features to a turbine that generates electricity for the house. And then in turn, it ends up in the River Derwent. We're having salad tonight with these little salmon fillets. They take one minute each in this silicon cooking pot and they're very very tasty with salad we've got lemon and parsley salmon for later in the week and they also do a black pepper version and a chili version one of our favorite caravan meals goes nice with potato salad and it's nice to be back after three months and we'll see you tomorrow cheers Morning, we're all settled in this former walled vegetable garden and I've got the key to the secret garden which is on the other side of that wall. So we're gonna get us walking boots on, coats on and we'll see you at the gate. There's the facility block. Our caravan backs up to the wall there and this is the path down to the gate. Behind where we're pitched is the free to roam dog area. There you go. Lock the gate behind me and the house is just over there. Chatsworth Cricket Club Thatched Pavilion. Friendly matches are played here between April and September. And if you like your cricket and you're in your caravan or motorhome or camper van, you ain't got far to walk because the caravan site is just on the other side of that wall.
So from the secret gate, we've come along this path at the side of the cricket ground, which is next to the caravan site. You can see the tops of the caravans and the River Derwent runs down the back of the caravan site. There are two structures that date back to the original Chatsworth House. There's this one, Queen Mary's Bower. It's a raised summer house and Queen Mary was frequently held prisoner here. And the other one is the hunting tower up on the hill, which we'll visit later. Look at this beautiful Chatsworth House in February sunshine. It was featured in Pride and Prejudice, you know. And we're looking at it from the Stone River Bridge next to Queen Mary's Bower. From the riverbank, you can see the statues on the bridge. There's the car park, and there is the hunting tower up on the hill. Do you know, it's remarkable to think that 16 generations of the Cavendish family have lived here at Chatsworth House. If you happen to be staying at the touring site approaching Christmas, the house and gardens are extravagantly decorated and illuminated, so it's well worth a visit. Cafe and shops this way. We'll have those usual tea and biscuits in that we've brought the flask. Around the corner from where we had our cup of tea outside the stable shops is the Chatsworth farmyard and Stan Wood. There's a useful map and information here. Lots of lovely walks through this wood and if you're planning on coming in May, June, you're in for a treat because this wood is heavily planted with rhododendrons. These are all in bud luck in February. This is the hunting tower available to let. Here's Swiss Lake obviously been drained and there you can see Swiss Cottage. We're at the top of Stanwood and this is Emperor Lake and it's lovely and peaceful here. This is the Ring Pond. It looks like this watercourse flows from Ring Pond and it flows down towards Sota Stone. And this is the top of the Sota Stone. This is the top of the aqueduct. From here you can see right down into the garden at the side of the house. This is the aqueduct fed from Ring Pond. From the aqueduct, the water feeds the water features in Chatsworth Gardens. It's the end of the day, we're heading off back to the caravan, but if you like your woodland walks, Stanwood is ideal. See you tomorrow. Morning, sun's coming out. Uh, what we're going to do today is drive four miles up the road to Eam Village. It's spelt E-Y-A-M, Eam, but it's pronounced Eam, double E-M. Um, it's a lovely little village with lots of history. Well, way back in 1665, it was ravaged by the plague and uh, there's lots of markers in the village telling the story. So let's go. Oh, before we go, 
uh, on the way to Eam, we'll be passing through a village called Stony Middleton, uh, which also has a story to tell. The limestone cliffs that tower above Curry Cottage uh, along the A632 is known as Lover's Leap. There's Stony Middleton, there's the limestone cliffs. Uh, Curry Cottage, here we are, look, on the right. And there's the storyboard on Curry Cottage Wall. It's a menu if you want to zoom in. We're here and I've clocked 4.7 mile. This is where it all started. This is Rose Cottage next door to Plague Cottage. This cottage is next door to Eam Parish Church. During this difficult time, the villagers isolated themselves to stop the disease spreading to surrounding areas. So, for the next 12 months, the villagers lived in voluntary isolation led by their heroic rector, William Mompesson. And here's the tomb of William's wife, Catherine, who unfortunately didn't survive the plague. There's a picture window in the church telling the story. The villagers buried their own folk wherever it was convenient. The graves of one family are maintained by the National Trust, but they're not here in the churchyard. So let's go and find them. Oh, before we go, I'd just like to point out this elaborate sundial, which dates from 1775. Oh, and I'll also point out this Celtic cross. It's pride of Eam village, being the only one in the Midlands with its head complete, but it's lost about two foot of its shaft. In August 1666, Elizabeth Hancock of Riley Farm buried her husband and six children over a period of eight days. I'll give you a brief overview of how the plague started at Plague Cottage. A tailor lived in Plague Cottage in 1665 and he had a box of cloth delivered from London and his assistant laid the damp cloth out in front of the fire to air and that's when they found it was infested with rat fleas. After being bitten by a flea, the bacteria would enter through the skin, it would travel through the lymphatic system, enter a lymph node, causing it to swell. And then fever, sickness, spasms and pus-filled buboes and bruising under the skin would follow. So the plague was a terrifying disease that spread quickly. So the nursery rhyme we all know from childhood, Ringa Ringa Roses, well the ring represents bruising a pocket full of poses represents the flowers you keep in your pocket to ward off the disease and a tissue a tissue we all fall down referred to the deaths of, of those who caught the plague. Villagers would collect their food and medicine from a place called Mompesson's Well and we're making our way there now. It's here. Here's the history of Mompesson's Well.
Here's Mont Pesson's well. It's about three quarters of a mile from the centre of the village. Villagers would collect provisions from here and in turn leave coins as payment. Tea and biscuits in the square and over there is the Village Green Cafe. Behind the cafe is the Miner's Arms. Oh, and centuries ago, if you were found drinking in the inn during church service, you'd be locked up in the stocks by the church warden. Here's a pause and reboard on the history of the village. We've had a lovely day here at Eam. We're going to head off back to the caravan and we'll see you tomorrow. Frosty start this morning, but at least the sun's come out. Well, what we're going to do today is go back through the gate into the Chatsworth estate and uh, wander over the river bridge into the small but delightful picturesque village of Enza. Well, each house is uniquely different in design and is centered around St. Peter's Church. Chatsworth house is over there. We're gonna walk over this river bridge and Enza village is just over the, the grass bank. We've come over the brow of the hill and here's a good view of the village. Here we are, Enza. The village was built in the mid 1800s, but the original village used to be closer to Chatsworth House, but the sixth Duke had it demolished and rebuilt because it spoiled his view. Apparently, the architect showed the Duke a selection of house designs and the Duke chose one of each. This is Norman Villa. Ends a tea cottage there and you can get a cooked breakfast. St. Peter's Church. And here's the Cavendish Monument. Here's the grave of Deborah Cavendish, uh, the previous Duchess of Devonshire who died in 2014. She was the youngest and last surviving of the famous Mitford sisters. We have Deborah to thank for allowing us all the freedom to roam the Chatsworth estate. Here's the grave of Joseph Paxton. He was head gardener at Chatsworth and he also designed Crystal Palace. For this trip, I've used OS Explorer map OL24. Here's the caravan site and the entrance road in. Chatsworth House, Stand Wood and Lakes. This is the river bridge and the footpath to Enza village. Oh, and by the way, there's Chatsworth Garden Centre. So if you carry on along this river path, it brings you to Carlton Lees. And here's the garden centre and car park if you want to drive there. To get to Eam village, you drive out of the caravan site to the A619, turn left and then at the roundabout take the A623. That takes you through Carver, through Stony Middleton and then you turn right here. This is the village, here's the church and Plague Cottage is next to the church and the stocks are here in the village green. This footpath next to the church takes you up to this road and then you can follow this road and here's Mom Pesson's well. Now from the village you can take this road and then bare left up Riley Lane 
and that will take you to Riley Graves. We didn't do it this time, but from the caravan site, you can walk to Nelson's Monument, Wellington's Monument, Kerber Edge, and Froggy Edge. And if you want to go to the Chatsworth Farm Shop and Cafe, which is here at Pilsley Village, you get 10% off when you're staying at the club site. That's it for another holiday. To sum up, the touring site and the Chatsworth Estate, very busy, very popular. It's Baslow, just down here, you'll find pubs, restaurants, cafes and a co-op. And if you want to drive to Bakewell, it's approximately six miles from this touring site, where you'll find the old Bakewell pudding shop, not to be confused with the Bakewell tart. Uh, it's the largest of the Peak District towns and a quaint place to visit. Well, thank you for joining us and hope to see you again soon. He's walking off. <laughs>